So thank you all for joining us for our annual general meeting. It's always a privilege to be able to talk to so many members who are active in the Humanist Association. We do this for you. Uh, you're what makes this possible. And we have a lot to talk about this year because 2023 was quite an exciting year. Uh, it's been an exciting few months in 2024 already, but I'm not actually going to talk about any of that. I decided to use December 31st as my cutoff, so I'm not going to talk about the big lawsuits today. Uh, but we did have a lot of coverage in 2023. You can see uh, some highlights here from the Vancouver Sun to TV pieces on CTV and City News. Uh, when Olivia was acting executive director, she got quoted in Peak Magazine, that's up in Squamish, as well as Victoria Buzz, or Press Progress, I believe. Uh, and we had a few other radio interviews that I didn't qualify in here, but it's always good to see that you know we're making uh, a reach into the public sphere. We released uh, five major reports last year. Uh, starting in the early part of the year, we had a co-authored report with the Abortion Rights Coalition of Canada on crisis pregnancy center websites and the misleading claims on them. That managed to get a little bit of press and was a good way to show how these websites use deceptive practices to mislead people seeking uh, reproductive options. We had our annual April 1st report, which has become a good tradition of humor and trying to use our ability to write long form to poke fun at something specific. And this time we took a look at school funding. Keeping up the school theme, we also looked at school acts in September in our religion and public school acts that looked across the country and compared each province's school act. Uh, BC's notably says all schools must be strictly secular and non-sectarian, but not all school acts are that good. We found one or two that included similar language, but a lot actually still included language that permits public schools to have prayers or religious instructions. Uh, in Alberta and Saskatchewan, those are actually constitutionally allowed because of a really weird quirk. The provinces could delete those sections of the act and we hope that if there is a change of government that will be more likely in those two provinces. Uh, and Manitoba actually has that still in its province is school act, but it has part of it's been struck down by the courts. Uh, and we've had some good communications with the new Manitoba government actually encouraging them to take a second look at their school act and possibly secularize it for the good of the future. We also did a minor update to our legislative prayer across Canada report just highlighting a couple small changes since then. And our big report at the end of the year was we yelled at them till they stopped. It was our follow up on prayers at BC municipal councils. And Teal and I could talk about this for an hour and a half or more. But the quick summary, as you've probably heard us talk about, is that we reduced the number of prayers being said at the inaugural meetings between 2018 and 2022 in BC from 26 down to seven. Uh, but we didn't stop with releasing a report. We did what we always do and we started advocating after it and we yelled at those seven municipalities even more and it delivered results as municipality after municipality confirmed to some extent or another that they would not do prayers in their future inaugural. My favorite, the little village of Belcara, within 48 hours of receiving our strongly worded letter, held a emergency in-camera council meeting and passed that resolution that you can read there saying they will never do prayers again. We're sorry very much. Unfor oh, and then two more, as you know, Parksville and Vancouver were still pursuing. Uh, we were also in the court last year in an intervention in a case involving the Jehovah's Witnesses trying to fight the Privacy Commissioner of BC, who wants to disclose records to two former Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, the court ultimately sided with the uh, Privacy Commissioner, and here's our uh, super awesome pro bono lawyer Wes McMillan. He's now on sabbatical, so we're working with a bunch of others. Uh, and John Truman at AMLC also helped out a lot on this case, and he is helping out on some of our current cases, including the appeal of this, where we're applying to intervene as well. We made a couple budget uh, major submissions. We submitted to the federal government's pre-budgetary consultation, making standard calls that they should take some of the privileges of religion out. Uh, and we also submitted to a parliamentary committee in the fall on the Canada Summer Jobs Program, which we mentioned earlier, highlighting in particular that that program has a requirement that funding not be used to undermine human rights. We endorse that uh, 
requirement and asked for it to stand up. And when the committee finally reported this spring, they actually cited our submissions, which was great to see. On the non-campaigning side, Sophie and I managed to complete and publish our end of life ebook, which was fantastic and received a very uh, positive reception from everyone who's managed to take a look at it. If you haven't yet, it's on our website. It's a great guide and we should always be doing a lot more to push this out, but there's always so much on the table. We wrote about a lot of other things on our website from property tax exemptions to religion in schools to uh, medical assistance in dying and the pushback against that. So, you know, we try to keep active in many different ways. Uh, we held a number of events, not as many as pre-pandemic, but we did have a few webinars and a few in-person gatherings, notably the Labor Day picnic and the winter solstice gathering, both of which had about 20 people out, which was fantastic to see. And I know the question you're going to ask is, should we have more in-person gatherings? And the answer is always yes, we will get them going into the summer very soon because it's much easier to do these in the summer. Social media was also really successful for us this past year, in particular our TikTok page. And I highlight here where it stands right now with almost as many followers on TikTok as we have on Facebook. And we've had our Facebook page for probably a decade and we've had our TikTok page for maybe one or two years. Uh, some of our best performing videos are there. You can see multiple of them had 20,000 views. One had 150,000 views. So we're getting a large audience on TikTok and it's a lot of fun. Teal also posts a lot there. And what's really notable is our gender breakdown of our audiences on TikTok is predominantly female versus every other platform is predominantly male. They're all kind of 35 to 55, except TikTok, uh, Instagram has a disproportionate number of 55 to 64 year old men. I don't know what's going on with that stat. But we're getting different audiences and this helps get our message out and we're attracting lots of volunteers off TikTok. we found people watch those videos and then reach out to us and that's been really helpful to get our message out and help grow the association so to close off i just want to say thank you to so many people thank you to olivia who filled in when i was on leave thank you so much to teal who just keeps our uh, research trucking to sophie who was on the board and helped co-author the end of life guide as Teal has mentioned, we had so many different volunteers. I'll highlight Nikki, Carrie, Peggy, Erica, Elias, uh, Elaine, uh, and there's many more who are getting more involved now as well. Our pro bono council, who I mentioned, and everyone who is on the board and was on the board, and in particular, uh, Sam Darling, who is uh, leaving the board as her health has taken a turn. Well, she's doing better now, but she's also moving to Montreal. So just like Sophie, she's leaving us for Montreal. But that's okay. We have uh, more board members eager to join us. And uh, I'm really looking forward to continuing to work on all of these campaigns through 2024.